Okay. I will go ahead and get started with what is hypotenuse computing. This is your computer, right? So all of you know you have a CPU, you have your main memory where all your stuff is being running, your i7 processors and AMD processors and so on. And this is secondary storage. You can hide your hard drive so it's, um, yeah, basically this is secondary storage. You can put in a USB stick, your cloud, or anything that you want, and you have the removable CDs, um, CDs, DVDs, which I don't think anybody uses anymore, but. <laughs> okay, so this is your average computer, right? All of you can make sense of this? And so now what happens is, when you're running, how many of you run an assembly job? Huh? Genome assembly? How many of you run jobs uh, how many of you have run out of space or like your computer just screams at you saying, I don't know what you're asking me to do? Yeah? No? Okay, if you're not there, you're on the sweet spot. You're going to hit there sometime. But if any of you have run, like, for example, an assembly job or a blast job or a PMD, PMD? Structural something. So if your computer stops and just stares at you and says, don't do anything, I'm angry, it's likely that you essentially run out of RAM. Um, you're using up too much space on your computer or too much memory, and because of that, it's just angry with you. In those cases, that's when you use a high performance cluster. I know most of our workstations are getting much bigger, and a lot of things are possible there, but with the amount of data that we have, um, the computer is not enough, and that's why um, we think about using a high performance cluster, which is where you can add 200 CPUs to it, or 3,000, you can have petabytes of storage, essentially. Um, but theoretically, you can store all of SRA there. Don't do it, but you can. And then you have more convenient archiving support. And if your computer, if you throw away your computer, your data is still sitting somewhere there. So you don't have to worry about it. Because that's the other big um, challenge I've had previously when I was doing my thesis, right before my thesis, my cluster died. And I didn't, like all my data was not backed up. So one week before my thesis, I had to be doing everything again, which is um, so it's always good to back things up. Okay, so now let's think of this as a new environment and like you're moving into a new city and I'm going to introduce high performance, a high performance computing environment that way. And stop me anytime you have questions. Please do. Okay, so welcome to the cluster. It's a population of hundreds. It is a shared resource. Um, biology is not the only um, community that's using these clusters. We have math department, we have humanities, social sciences, um, yes. physics, oh my god, yes, physics, they do have lots of data. So you're sharing the space with everybody. It's like moving into a new city. Everybody talks a different language, Every everything is new here, um, and you should be mindful of using shared community spaces, which is why you find this up here. So to give you a brief introduction about Indiana University clusters, uh, it's brought to, you, brought to you by UITS, which is who's supporting the Supercomputing for Everyone workshop series. There's more um, workshops available in this semester. I have a postcard of last semester's, oh, sorry, last year's uh, spring semester, because this year's is not out yet. But if you go on here, there are other workshops available as well, so you can go check them out. Um, these are the two clusters that we use as biologists. Uh, this is not the only ones I use supports. The first one is Carbonate, which is what we point most of our users to, because it has 500 gigs of memory, uh, which is enough for most assembly jobs. Um, and then we have CAS to run smaller jobs that has smaller, um, smaller memory, but then it has lots of cores and it has lots of memory. So it basically means you can parallelize something. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hopefully I'll get there. Um, the, Pros to using these clusters is that you can log in from anywhere. You don't have to be at IU to log in. Um, I did log in from India when I went to India, so which is awesome. Um, I can get all my stuff done online, so my computer is not doing any work. It's just connecting to this cluster somewhere else and doing the work there. So if something breaks, it's it's not my computer just breaking and dying on me. It's somewhere else, uh, somewhere else so I can deal with it. And they're really fast. They're much faster than your average computer. Some considerations to, uh, to consider is that some considerations to do is that it is command line. We are trying to get out of it, and there's something called the research desktop, which is the front end to Carbonate right now, which acts like the desktop to the high performance uh, cluster, so you don't have to learn command line from scratch, but you will get there eventually, and that will be a bottleneck. 
there are limited users because of that bottleneck. Not everybody knows command line, and it is a steep learning curve in the beginning, which we're all trying to focus on a little more. And sometimes the software you want, particularly for your project, is not installed, and that means you have to request the administrators or us to install the software for you, um, which means there's some middleman. And if you're wondering why you need to know that, it just means it's really fast. It does a lot of React, which is where the biology thing is moving, and it does blast jobs like amazingly fast. We haven't tried Big Red 200 yet, because it's not up, but Big Red 3 is supposed to be fast. You can carry and bulge on. It's still blast on here, right? Okay, that's 